approving our motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay, motion from Peggy and second from TC. Any conversation? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Our first agenda item is our public hearing tax abatement request from Bigelow and Lennon Construction. Our speaker is Executive Director of Finance and Operations, Todd Lichtenberg. Good evening. Chairperson today, board, and Superintendent Dr. Page, I'm here to discuss um, Austin Public Schools has always partnered with the City of Austin and Mauer County to offer a five-year tax abatement for new construction of single multi-family homes. What you have in front of you is this agreement was from December 31st of 2022 through December 31st of 2025. And the agreement was they had to start within a year of that um, December 2022. They did not start this in time, so they are reapplying for that five-year um, extension. So that is what we're, is in front of you. So let me go down a little bit on here to get the... Okay, computer's gotta catch up to this thing here. So it is for the address of 1309 18th Street, Northeast Austin, Minnesota 55912. Um, and it is $437,000. So we're asking for approval for this to be reapplied. Okay, is there a motion to approve the tax abatement? Yeah. As the didn't start within that one year time frame, we just because it's a five year tax abatement, they want to start that in that frame. Is my understanding. The initial agreement is yes, it had to start within a year from your approval date, and they did not start construction, so it went null and void. So they want, they decided now they want to start the construction so they have to be alive. Oh, they never even started to build. Nope. The coverage. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you, Sharon. <laughs> Good clarification. All right. I'll take a motion. Oh. Motion for Peggy. Is there a second? Second from Carol. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, motion passes for the tax abatement. There's a couple recognition spaces tonight. We're going to start with our Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. essay winner, Donna Lopez, with guest speaker, Southgate teacher, Carly Carroll. And student, Ivana Lopez. <laughs> Chairperson Dubay, Superintendent Page, members of the board, and guests. I am honored, honored sorry. I am honored to introduce Ivana Lopez. She is a fourth grade Pi Academy student at Southgate. Formal Black Committee invites classrooms to participate in the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. essay contest. The question they ask is, what does Martin Luther King Jr. mean to me? Ivana wrote a wonderful, heartfelt essay. She was chosen as one of the top three essays. She participated in a special event hosted by Volvo. Ivana read her essay at the special event. It was quite an honor, and I'm very proud of her. Do you have any questions? She has a copy. She can we would love to hear it. Dear Martin Luther King Jr. Um, taught me to be brave and never give up, even if I'm not successful. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was brave for not giving up. When he was put in jail in first grade, I was having a hard time on something and I didn't give up. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was brave when he joined a school with white people, even though he could have been kicked out. In second grade, I was worried I'm not a good friend, so I came up to a girl and said, do you want to be friends? Do you want to be friends? Even though she had a different skin color than me, I, and I tried, and I tried again, and I soon got a friend. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was brave when he fought hate with love, even though they treated him horribly. Whenever I was really angry and said bad things about me, I didn't get angry. Instead, I hugged him. Even though he didn't like it, I tried again. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was always good, and he showed me and taught me 
to have a doubt. There was a report that said keep going even if you fall or don't give up. Dr. Cage and school board members, it's my pleasure this evening to highlight some of our winter season athletics and activities. With me tonight are the advisors and coaches that were able to be present. Um, I'll introduce each coach and advisor and they'll share their program and season highlights and their respective activities that they lead. I very much appreciate the time and commitment they put into our programs to create great experiences for our students at Austin High School. First up, we have FIRST Robotics. Uh, this was the first year of implementation after, I believe, four or five years. Um, and this year, we had 24 participants. The head coach was Ryan Stanley and assisted by Annie Christofferson, Christine Nelson, Zach Fadness, and Richard Eckland. So, Mr. Stanley, you want to come up? Thank you, Mrs. Carter. We had a great season this year. Um, it was a rebuild year. So we um, we started a little late in uh, meeting with the students. Uh, we started in early November, mid October, and um, uh, started with just working on design, parts of the robot. And um, our season technically didn't start until January 6th. That's when we had kickoff for first. So we'll find out what the need is. And then after that, um, uh, we had about six weeks to build the robot. And go. we went to Duluth, Minnesota this year to compete. Um, it, like I said, it was a learning year. It was a rebuild year. And uh, the students did awesome. And they, we, we learned a ton. So, are there any questions? Well, the students need to go I had one senior, so I think yeah. most of them will return, yes, and hopefully we can do some recruiting and, and get some more, so. And we are doing a fundraiser this year. Um, we just came up with it a couple weeks ago. The students are designing it. It's in the back here. It is a fire pit, so if you can check that out. I'll leave it down here and just grab it in the morning, so. Thank you so much for sharing. Next up, we have um, FFA. We have 21 participants, and our advisor, Kim, come on up and tell us a little bit about your season, year long. Still going. Still going. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Katie. <coughs> um, I'm here to present, represent um, Nick Schultz and myself. Um, we have been lucky to um, have been on, um, selected for the FFA, as you know, for the last three years. Um, after the previous um, egg teacher had left. So we've been very successful. We are starting to wind down. <laughs> Yay. Um, <we're laughs> it's been busy. We've, we've had a very busy year between um, a mechanics team and our general livestock, our fundraising things that we have done. If they get a national trip out of it, this would be the year that our egg mechanics could pull it off. Um, they, got, they got a great team meshed together. A couple of years ago, it was our livestock team, but this year it's gonna—it's looking like our 
um, egg mechanics team. We only lose one off of there. They've worked together for the last three years. So that's pretty exciting. Um, livestock, we've got a new team. We knew that going into it this year. So they've been working really hard as well. Um, so that's kind of us. And then um, we're going to end off in May with our banquet, but it doesn't end there. We go through the summer with different activities. So um, we've been busy. We're grinding down just a little, kind of close to a little. So thanks for all your support with our FFA program, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Science Olympia. 17 participants are advisors to show this feet. Uh, just a couple highlights, I'm sure she might touch on it a little bit more. They placed third um, at regionals, and they did place 19th at the state competition. Their, their finals placement did qualify the four states. So, Tisha, come on up. Good evening. Um, Sons of Olympia, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary of the start of Sons of Olympia. It started in uh, Michigan State in 1984. Uh, we are pretty much nationally and then also internationally. We've got uh, places, uh, Science Olympia teams in like Japan and other places as well. We did very, very well. We placed third, uh, got a trophy out of that from it. Pretty excited about it. Medalists at regions were Naris and Vivi, third place in anatomy and physiology. Claudia and Nano, third place in astronomy. Vivi, Nadia, and Haley, third place in code busters. Uh, that was pretty tough. You need to know Morse code, all these different kinds of codes. Like one person said, I'll take the I'll take the Morse code, I'll take sign language, I'll take this. I mean, it's just across the board. Uh, Ruby and Macy Wu uh, placed second in ecology. Vivi and Macy third in fossils. Ruby and Amber placed fourth in microbial mission. That's dealing with uh, bacteria, viruses, vectors. Uh, Grace and Liam placed third in optics. Pretty cool considering like Grace wants to go in there. She wants to be an optician later on, so she got out the, the different optics there. Um, Liam placed first in Scrambler. He has been working on that since last year. He's like, I'm gonna win that thing, and darn it, he did not win in regions. He was darn sure he would not let anybody else be his partner. He's gonna win that clear out. So uh, I believe he used laser printing or laser. Yeah, to carve things out, maybe that thing was a sight to behold. Uh, Elgie and Maria, third place in wind power, and Grace and Haley, first place in Ride to Do It. That's where somebody sees something made very crazily, writes the directions, and then the other person, without seeing what was made, reads those directions and tries to mimic what was what was being made. And we placed our uh, women's state on March 2nd at Bethlehem University, and Haley and Grace. Metal, they play seconds in states, right? Do it all over the place. I think they have like just one off from what it was. They, they, like every time you come in, hey, this is just to make us something, they write it, they do it so many times. So that, that worked really well. We had some, uh, Namo and Claudia also got fifth in astronomy, and then Liam and Grace placed, placed fourth in optics. So they did a really great job. Your own, uh, Nars is part of it. She's been four years. She was a team captain this year, too. So, did a great job. Thanks for having Thank us. Knowledgeable. Miss Luffers and I were joking and couldn't find any pictures to share. So, we have the brain up there. <laughs> uh, we have nine participants. Uh, Miss Luffers was a new first year advisor. So, I'm very appreciative of her. her taking the lead on Knowledge Bowl, and I will let her come up and share a little bit about Knowledge Bowl this year. Thank you, Ms. Carter. Um, like she mentioned, I was new to the program this year, and it was a bit of a learning curve for me. Um, but the nine students that we had were all very patient. We had a couple returning members who were very willing to help me learn and understand um, how Knowledge Bowl works. So, uh, this year we had seven 10th graders and two 11th graders, and we ended up going to three competitions. One, uh, we missed one, it was scheduled on the one day that would have been a snow day this year. So they were super bummed that they, that they had to miss that. Um, all of them were up at the Southeast Service Cooperative in Rochester. December 11th, we had um, enough students to make one team. 
Um, the teams need to have at least four people um, to, to be considered a team. And that day we placed 11th out of 14. So we were happy that we were not at the bottom of the deck that day. Um, and January 2nd was the, the tournament that was canceled. February 1st, we had enough students to have two teams. Um, our Austin 1 team placed 9 out of 23, and our Austin 2 team placed 8 out of 23 that day. So we were very impressed and very happy um, that we had made such an improvement over the first time. And then we had our sub-regional competition on February 23rd, <coughs> where Austin won the same group of students at that time, placed 10 out of 22, and Austin 2 tied for 14 out of 22 on that, on that time. Um, there's already talked by the students of um, recruiting people for next year, and they, they continue to ask me if we can have additional practices, even though the season is over. Uh, because we just have so much fun practicing Tuesday after school, um, quizzing each other and seeing who can answer the most trivia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is our drama club. We have 37 participants. Um, I'm not sure, I'm sure Kim will talk a little bit more about the second performance coming up. And our advisor is Kim Pog. Good evening. Um, I am your AHS theater director. Uh, this is our second act, as the students say, or they say we're bad. Um, I'm proud to say we've doubled our participants since our re-engagement last year, with even more hopping on to volunteer. Uh, with our volunteer hours, I've got people pouring in, can we help you build, can we help you make something? So that's great. Um, we had a busy year back. We even started before school started. Our students came to both Somerset shows that I was in, in June and August. And boy, you know when they are there, because they are loud and proud of every performer. Um, shouting even in the lobby as actors come out to greet others. In the words of some of my fellow castmates, I love when the theater kids come because I feel like a rock star. <laughs> um, we were part of Austin Artworks this year and plan to be regulars now as we were um, well received. Then we expanded our community connections. We worked with Pay It Forward, came in 50s gear and poodle skirts and danced with the patrons and mingled. Throughout the rest of this year, we dressed up for CLC's family fun night, participated in Van Fails family night with character readings. And this weekend, we will be hosting concessions for the volleyball tournament that will be here. Um, and last weekend, we did concessions for Ellis Middle School's uh, performance. This summer, we will be joining um, Gretchen Erickson on the stairs um, with some character readings at Reader's Cafe hosted at Idris Hilton. A major community event we had fun with was working with Pizza Ranch in December. Their first time trying Fun Fridays. They, there we dressed up as Elsa, Anna, and Olaf with some elf friends, and the kids had to play arcade games with the patrons. So they kind of enjoyed themselves. It was fun to see all the smiling faces and many exciting pictures were taken. Even we had some mini Elsa and Anna's coming just to get those pictures. And because of this collaboration, they are gifting us a cast party next week. Next week. Um, we hope this is a new thing that we can look forward to being a part of in the future. Of course, our highlight of the fall was our first musical. We performed High School Musical. It was hard work since there were so many weeks that were short weeks, holidays, MEA, etc. In the end, it was well received and really helped tell our story. We are a mix of everything. We have geeks, jocks, and drum music kids. We worked hard on many set pieces and costumes. With these great tools we continue to build and work on, we are now expanding beyond the reach of Austin and sharing tools and materials. We sent our Sally Potter banners from last year to IOTA for their production. Our high school music materials are up in the cities right now. We are also sharing within our APS clubs. We are sharing columns and anything else that our prom committee can use, as well as some materials for the D&D groups to do some fun photos with props. Our collaboration with Ellis has been tremendous. We have done many things jointly and now say we are APS theater when we talk about stuff. We have cabinets being put up soon, which are a grant from APEF, as well as more microphones. We re also received a light board from Riverland. We received a donation of materials and costumes from Northwest Singers when they disbanded. 
We receive props from Pacelli. We continue to benefit from second act thrift store where we can borrow things and then take them back to be sold. We appreciate all of our theater partners for continuing to collaborate, Matchbox Children's Theater, Riverland, and Somerset. This collaborative nature in the theater community has allowed our students to make choices on what productions they would like to be in. It has increased participation across all of our community stages. It has also helped increase the great speech program we have here. Many of our speech and drama kids have a great chance to go to state, which by the way, they will be double booked because it is the second day of our production. So they will have a busy day, but don't worry, we have a plan. As I stand here, the students are at Ellis right now rehearsing. We will be presenting a murder mystery called Alibis in two weeks. It is a collection of little vignettes between interrogations. This is a smaller cast, but it is a fun show with a twist at the end, so be sure to join us uh, next weekend. In the end, I want you to know I continue to hear from our students that they feel safe, they feel heard, but in the end, they are learning so much about themselves and each other. We want to thank you for your continued support. Any questions? Uh, rounding out the activities category, we have speech, and unfortunately, Mr. Hansen wasn't able to be here tonight. Uh, we have 19 participants this year. As I said, Dan Evans Hansen is our leader and coach of the speech team. He did email me something really quick to just share. Uh, the speech team continues to improve each season, and we are grateful for the support we've received from the district to get to where we are. We couldn't do it without your help. We continue to grow in membership, up to 17 members from last year's 13 and are projected to grow significantly next year. This year we've come home with more first place, second place, and third place sweepstake trophies than ever before. We're still open for new members for next year, so please spread the word about us at Ellis and IJ. Junior high students can compete along with us. Uh, this Thursday on April 11th, uh, they head to the sectional tournament and they hope to make it to the state tournament for the first time in over 20 years. They have a great chance to send at least a few young people to the state tournament at Shakopee High School, which I believe is at the end of April. Yes, the day before prom. We have the best team captains a coach could ask for along with a few other seniors who we will dearly miss next year. Otherwise, we are a very young team and the future is bright. So that's for Mr. Hansen. Uh, moving on to our athletics for the winter. First up will be boys basketball. Um, this was just the Austin High School grades 9 through 12. We had 48 participants at five levels with varsity, JV, B squad, 9A and 9B. Um, in those stats, we had one all-conference and one all-conference honorable mention. Our head coach for the second year is Jamal Gibson, and his assistants were Tate Brink, Stephen Lang, and Josh McCray rounding out the other levels. Jamal. Uh, like she said, I'm Jamal Gibson. Just finished my second year um, as a boys basketball coach, head boys basketball coach. Um, for the boys basketball program, we like to put an emphasis on the three C's, what we call it, um, on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. Um, on the court this year, game days record-wise was not is what is our typical expectations. Um, it wasn't great, but quite frankly, when you look at every other day on the court when we're in practice, it was an absolute blast to be there. Um, our seniors did an incredible job of um, showing our younger guys exactly what we expect when you come to practice every day, how hard you work, um, the attention that you show to your game, and the respect that you give to your teammates and your coaches. Um, they did a great job of showing um, how much respect we really need to show our teammates and our opponents and then how we have to respect the game. Um, and I'm really grateful for the four seniors that we had this year on um, part of our program. A part of the community, uh, we did a couple extra, um, a part of our, uh, instead of our usual things, we did a couple extra um, community service things. We teamed up with United Way and Austin Spires to do a couple other things. Um, we are hopeful to go forward and do extra things. We've reached out to a few churches in the area. Um, we'd love to do that because I really want them to understand that the community does so much for them. Um, and it's nice for them to give back to the community as much as they can. Um, and then the last C, um, and personally my most important C is the classroom. Um, and our 10 through 12 graders, I think, did an incredible job. Um, they kind of knew what we were expecting from them as student athletes, a part of the school. 
Um, our ninth graders, on the other hand, uh, it was definitely a learning curve for them. Um, I think some of our educators that are here, you know, those ninth graders can attest to that, that it was definitely a struggle at times. Um, but I am hopeful that they will figure things out as we go forward because I just think that is incredibly important for them as their future. And um, I like to use basketball as a tool to uh, hold them accountable so they can be the best that they can be going forward. So, um, any questions? What is the community service activity down in the lower um, left-hand corner? So that was at um, Austin Spires through the United Way, um, the Hormel Foundation on the uh, hunger. Um, Actually, like a little humble brag right here. They said we were actually the fastest at that game. <laughs> and I wish we had a video to show, but they they had a nice little assembly line going. They were moving, working well as a team. They did an incredible job, and they had a blast doing it. Um, we had every single player there, which I mean was awesome to see. Like, because I didn't require them to be there, but they understood what um, the community has done for them and what the food and security project did for us uh, multiple times for some of our away trips this year, and so. They wanted to get back to that, and I mean, it was an absolute blast to have that. So, thank you, thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have wrestling. Um, we offer wrestling grades seven through twelve here up at Austin High School. This year, we have forty participants with varsity and JV levels. We have one off-conference, one section champion, and one state participant in Sam Winkles. I'll let Coach Nelson just talk a little bit more about the season. Jake Nelson is our head coach, and he's assisted by Blake Walters, Lyle Allen, Dan Rashavi, Mitch Shotness, Mark Winkles, and Sam Elfie was a volunteer coach this year. Coach Nelson? Good evening. Uh, I'm Coach Nelson. I've been the head coach for some 15 years, losing track of time. But um, up to 40 participants, which was huge last year, we ended the season with 18. Um, so we're on the rise and we're growing. And we only have <coughs> two seniors this year graduating. Um, one is actually considering to, to wrestle at the next level in college. Um, and the other one was our girl wrestler who made it through the seven. All the way through the high school um, and had a good section tournament the last two years placing top six. Um, <clears throat> overall, it was a very young team and a little bit of rebuilding. Um, we had 18 different athletes that, that participated at the varsity lineup, uh, whether that was in dual meets or uh, individual tournaments. Um, we had, like I said, 40 um, participants. Um, two of them didn't stick out the entire year, but um, were exposed and, uh, to the sport and seemed to really enjoy it. Um, we actually did have an all-conference on the mention as well, uh, and one all-conference. Um, Sam Winkles did some pretty cool things this year and had probably one of the best seasons that uh, an Austin wrestler has had in some time. Um, he was 49-3 overall record. We uh, set the single season win record with 49 wins, which is a 20 year old um, school record. Uh, he also set the single season falls record, uh, 26 falls, which was also a 20, 20 year old school record. And then he set the single season near fall record at 47, which was a record set in 2017. Um, <clears throat> he was our um, he went to state last year, but this year he placed fourth at state, which was our first place winner at the state tournament uh, since 2006 or 17 as well, or 18, 2018. Um, currently, Sam sits at 93 wins and 14 losses. Uh, he is, still has one year left. He was just a junior this year, so um, we're really <coughs> happy and proud of him. Um, his accomplishments and a lot of the younger guys are looking up to him um, for what this program should be and needs to be um, moving forward. Um, we also earned enough to, to have the academic silver team all state uh, uh, recognition as well. Um, that's about all I can think of. Any questions? I have a quick question. 
question. Sure. Um, you mentioned that you had a female wrestler. Mm -hmm. Is that a space that uh, there's growing interest? Yeah, we have. It was just uh, Jamie um, Byer for the longest time, and uh, this year we actually had three um, total. Um, and you know, you can see a few of them on the, the poster there. Um, but you know, we do have a lot of room to to, uh, to improve in that area, and we're always looking for new people, new um, new wrestlers, um, girls or guys. Um, there's a lot of new opportunities for females wrestling right now. It's one of the fastest forms of wars, and uh, we're thrilled to be involved in that. Thank you. Boys Swim and Dive, our program at Austin High School 712. This year we had 19 participants, varsity and JV levels, two all conference, two all conference honorable mention, four state participants, one all state swimmer in Brent Dahl. Head coach was Ryan Kelly, and he is assisted by Emily Wilcox, Bergen Hall, who's our diving coach, and then Travis Walsh. I thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, so my name is Ryan Kelly. I've been the uh, boys swim and dive, head swim and dive coach since 2018. Uh, I also work with the girls. Uh, actually, I'm going to start off with a little update from the girls. I know Alexa already said something about them this fall, but uh, we found out just fairly recently uh, that Elena, uh, Elena Kennedy is going to be up for Athlete of the Year. Uh, in the state here, and she's so people are voting on it right now, and we'll find out that at the end of the month. Uh, she was the state champion in, in diving uh, during the drill season, so that's a pretty cool thing for her. Um, so we'll see what happens. I think she's got a shot, but uh, there's some other tough competition there, obviously. So, uh, okay, as far as the boys go, uh, you, know, you can see if you look at that picture, we were young, uh, we were very young. You can see a bunch of those, uh, those. Very good challenge dudes there in the front. Um, but the, they're young, they're seventh graders, and uh, they, they came out and they, they worked their tails off. Um, our team was, the makeup of this team was very interesting. Our top end of our, our group was really talented, and then obviously, you know, the lower end has got a, a bunch of growth to do just because they're, they're young. We ended up fifth in the Big Nine Conference meet, which is pretty good out of 12 teams for us. Uh, for a team of you know 19 kids, I think we uh, participated 17 in that meet. Uh, we were fourth in the section meet out of nine teams. Uh, again, really good for our small group. Uh, Brent Dahl, you can see he was uh, all conference. He actually won the conference or the section meet uh, in two events with the uh, the 200 IM and the 500 freestyle. Set our team record in the 500 freestyle at that. Uh, that race. Um, let's see. Uh, actually, after the season, he went out and he threw down a backstroke time in a club meet that's faster than our, our team record. So we'll see what he does next year with that. Uh, let's see. Zach Evenson also was an individual uh, team member or individual competitor at the state meet. Had a couple of swims there and just was feeling a little bit under the weather that night and just missed getting into finals on both of those. Uh, but Zach and Brent uh, and, and Hunter Peters and Trey Myers were on our relay teams. Our two relay teams at state went uh, 14th and 11th uh, respectively. Uh, also, we had we were a silver academic squad this year, which means our, as a whole, our average GPA of our 10th graders and above was 3.5 or better, uh, and that's the best. You know, we've been silver or gold. Gold is 3.75. We've had that, uh, I think, every year since I've been in coaching, so that's a pretty, pretty cool thing to keep going for us. Uh, let's see. Um, we have four 11 for 11 awards on our team this year, and 11 for 11 means you've got swimmers that swam every possible swimming event during the course of the year. Uh, that that's, shows some versatility that we've got, uh, so that's pretty exciting to see. Looking ahead, um, I've been working on getting, uh, I've been going through our archives, going through uh, you know school records and things like that, and I'm putting together a set of all our historical 
uh, state champions, all Americans, um, things like that that have come through. Uh, for the boys team, I think we've got 23, if I remember the number right, uh, state champions that have come through our program through the years. We've got two team state champions. Uh, we have from way back when, when this event actually happened, we have two national interscholastic champions that came out of Austin. Uh, and then we have, I'm not quite done going through all the archives on it, uh, but we're gonna have somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, five to eight, um, maybe more boys, uh, all Americans, and then we'll also have some girls, all Americans that we've got to, that I've got to go through and, and get, uh, get fiddled through there. So that's gonna take me a little time, but uh, getting there. And then uh, we've got our diving boards coming in this, or the one diving board and two uh, bases coming in here this uh, summer. So we're really excited about that. We went through the whole year with only one board, which is a little tight, uh, but we made it work and uh, moving ahead. You know, we're just uh, trying to recruit hard, trying to get those numbers back up into those mid twenties area. That'd be really uh, where we want to be. Hopefully we can keep our success going. Any questions? I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, rounding out the rest of the slides of the following coaches from here on out weren't able to be here tonight. Uh, girls basketball is next. This year we did a little bit of a change. We moved our eighth graders up to the high school level this year. Um, they rounded out our C squad and ninth grade uh, team. We had 39 participant, participants in the high school level with the varsity JV C squad levels. Uh, we had one all-conference and one all-conference honorable mention. Ajela Bwa reached her 1,000 career points this winter, and our head, our head coach is Eric, Eric Zosky, with assisted by Jordan Klein, Blake Harris, and Anna Sharma. Uh, gymnastics, again, we offer eight through 12. Seventh grade have the option, but a lot of them stay club for one more year to gain more experience and work on their skills. They were small but mighty. They had 10 participants. We had one all-conference honorable mention, and then we had three state participants, Emily Clapper, Kim Bean, Kelly McCray and Bars, and Kiki Rodriguez, and all around. The head coach, uh, Sarah Weiss, she was a first-year head coach this year, and she was assisted by Lauren Schmidt. Boys hockey, grades nine, I'm sorry, it should be 10 through 12. The ninth graders, they finished out their youth at Bantam, so it was grades 10 through 12. We had 19 participants, and we had one level this year. Um, just kind of looking forward to next year. The Bantam group was really large, and so next year we will have enough members to offer a JV level as well. Uh, we had one all-conference player, and our head coach was Troy Schaefer, and our assistant coach was Troy Holtz. Girls hockey, uh, grades seven through 12. It was a really young group. We had a good pocket of seventh graders a splash of some of the earlier years and then a few juniors and seniors to round out the group. Uh, we had 24 participants. They did piecemeal two levels together, varsity and JV. It started off pretty strong towards the end of the season. There were some injuries and we were down a goalie, so that got a little, a little hairy, but we made it work. We had to cancel some games because of numbers, but we were happy to be able to offer those two levels. We had one all-conference selection, one all-conference honorable mention, um, there wasn't a co-head coach. One coach, Sultana Ackerman, was the head coach, and she had three assistants, Denny Bray, uh, who you might remember from years past in the girls' hockey program, Sarah Jensen, and Mark Austin. And then finally, rounding out um, our dance team, they are comprised of dancers grades 7 through 12. They had 42 participants this year. Um, as you probably are well aware, we had a very successful year in dance. Uh, they were the Big Nine champions in kick. Uh, they won the Section 1 AA in both kick and jazz in their first place. And then they rounded out up at the state uh, tournament, second place in kick and eighth place in jazz. Uh, I didn't do my editing very well. We had four all-conference and four all-conference honorable mention. Our head coach, Kayla Sellers, and she was assisted by Alyssa Abrejo, Paige Liebeck, Brianna Fairfax, and Bailey Sojourn. And then right there in the middle, the awards just keep coming through, you know, from the state tournament and beyond. They had two all-tournament team members, Rachel Danielson and Lexi Yoiko. 
Allstate, uh, one double A kick was Marty Nagley, Rachel Danielson, and Lexi Yoiko. Allstate, one double A jazz was Lexi Yoiko. Academic Allstate was Eva Nelson, and they earned the Academic Silver Award. And we just uh, found out yesterday that our team received the Sportsmanship Award for double A. So that was really good. They had a really good season. They worked really hard and just super proud of all of our activities and athletics and the adults and teachers that manage and work with them all year and dedicate so much time to create successful programs for us. And I just, I thank you for your continued support and our efforts to offer well-rounded extracurriculars for our students at Austin High School. And I look forward to seeing you again in June with the spring activities now. Any questions? Thank you so much. Thank you. Are there any delegations tonight? Seeing none, we will continue with our superintendent's report with Dr. Page. Thank you, Chair Today, members of the board. A few items to touch on tonight. Uh, first of all, for the second year in a row, Austin Public Schools has been named one of the best communities for music education by the NAM Foundation for its outstanding commitment to music education. This is the 25th year of this award, and it's the second year in a row that Austin Public Schools has been uh, recognized. And Austin was one of seven districts in the state of Minnesota to win this honor. Uh, the Austin High School Music Hall of Fame has announced this year's addition to the Austin High School uh, Hall Music Hall of Fame. Uh, this year's inductees include Tony Alonzo, Jacob Dolliger, and Brandon Lawhead. They'll be honored during a dinner at the McDale Center for Music in Austin uh, here on May 9th at 5 p.m. Um, that's uh, taking place right after the Spring Orchestra concert. I also want to congratulate uh, Christy Beckman. She's the Equity and Integration Coordinator and on her uh, recognition of the 2024 Zanta Woman of Achievement Award. This award honors women who have demonstrated a commitment to leadership in their community, and we'll be celebrating her tomorrow night out of the Holiday Inn. Good old Pell Tree, sorry. Yeah. Uh, again, we, we've talked about this, but we had a, the final ceremony, so I just, again, I want to recognize Derek Pika. Uh, earlier this year, we call it, he was this, uh, by a teacher from Southern Elementary was named the 20, uh, 2024 Sheep uh, America Central District uh, Elementary School PE Teacher of the Year, and uh, which qualified him for the national award. Uh, though he didn't uh, win that award, it's still a tremendous accomplishment, and really uh, congratulate him for all of the great work he does uh, providing physical education instruction at Summit. Uh, recognizing last month, the Austin High School Career Pathways Fair uh, took place. Uh, this was a unique opportunity to engage with over 30 regional employers and colleges. Uh, they explored careers in high demand areas across five crucial sectors, and that worked with industry professionals looking for a fresh talent and investigating a uh, range of career options uh, that they have. So it was a wonderful event, and we're looking to build on that in the future. So he's not here tonight, but I want to thank Don Leathers, who invited me to um, ride with him on his Smart Transit route. Uh, it was great, um, lots of little kids, and it was great to see the commitment uh, for student mobility and more that SMART provides, and Don does a great job. Uh, the kids really love it, as you can imagine. Uh, we have an exciting event on April 25th at the Spam Museum. Uh, it's called a Work of Art. It's creating a food security uh, community event. And the students uh, at Austin High School have been working on art projects to help bring attention to food insecurity. So, uh, we shared this information out last week. We have uh, our SVPs available uh, to anyone who wants to attend. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we were able to attend the GED's uh, uh, graduation uh, out of Riverland. And I just want to congratulate the Stefani, Nauchit, and Fernando on completing their GEDs uh, through Austin Adult Learning. And it was a great uh, ceremony, and also to hear about their future. Uh, Stefani is advancing to Riverland to pursue a nursing degree. Now, Chit is on a path for her master's and PhD in education technology and computer science, and Fernando is exploring liberal arts science as well. So they're both, all of them, were shining examples of the hard work of their dedication and their staff. So it was a really great event. Um, I also wanted to thank all of our schools uh, and their work on Austin High School's four-year graduation rate. So uh, an increase from 21, 22 to 22, 23. 
Uh, and I just want to highlight uh, their work. Uh, one of the things we had shared in our uh, press release, and I just want to mention this again, that every classroom and every grade and every site has a responsibility for their graduation rate. And I was really excited to see the work that's being done across our system uh, to improve student outcomes. So congratulate uh, all of our staff, uh, particularly our high school. And then last week, I uh, just want to recognize our assistant principals in our system. It was assistant principal week. And I really want to acknowledge and thank them for all of the work that they do uh, in our sites each and every day. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Um, are there any board reports from anybody? Okay, I'll go. Oh, cool. Go ahead. You're first. I was just going to comment that I have the honor of visiting South Creek Melvin Woodson at Austin High School recently, and it's just really exciting um, to see how the building is going to be rearranged at the elementary schools um, to welcome the kindergartners, and I just wanted to thank all the staff and um, administration for working so well together to um, make it a very positive experience. Thanks, Carol. <clears throat> Anybody else? I just, well, we have some folks that presented tonight. I, I really would like to thank um, staff members who step up to be coaches for all of these activities. Um, they all had full-time jobs prior to coaching, and uh, nobody is going to get rich on Schedule C. <laughs> so um, I really appreciate them stepping up and providing these opportunities for um, kids. Those are the memories that come first when you think about high school, and, and um, we can't do that without their contributions. So I thank them. That is an excellent point. Thank you. Um, I have a couple things to share. Um, I want to recognize Kathy Bailey, who is a para at um, Woodson Kindergarten Center. Um, we had a staff member with a medical emergency last month, and Kathy's quick response and recognition of the science um, involved meant that kids are safe, the staff members are safe, and um, I just want to share gratitude. I know that other board members share the exact same feeling. Uh, we, we always appreciate the team approach to um, keeping everything moving forward, and she, she did some pretty great things that day. So if you see Kathy Bailey, give her a big pat on the shoulder and say thank you. Um, in other news, uh, the Austin Public Ed Foundation just um, approved $101,000 worth of grants for teachers here in Austin Public Schools. We were able to approve 66 grants in total, um, and, and all of those are spread across the district. So teachers, if you have not checked your email yet, please do so. Um, related information. The Packer Classic is coming up on July 15th. I say this every year, this is my thing. Um, registration's open, we are looking for sponsors and donors and players, so come out and have a fun day at the Austin Country Club. Any other board reports? All right, we're gonna keep moving forward and we are going to turn to our Student Representative Reports with Valerie Saki and Eddie Durrell. Superintendent Page, Chairperson DeBay, and members of the board, my name is Naris. I'm your 12th grade representative, and I will be presenting to you the first half of the student report. I'm excited to share with you what is going on at Aspen High School. So, as mentioned earlier, the Packers speech team is closing out its regular season um, with the last tournament being on 
March 23rd at Mayo High School, the Spartan Speech Showdown, where we overall placed third in team sweepstakes and brought home a trophy. This Thursday, the team will compete at sections for a chance to go to state, and we're excited to see what will happen. On March 20th, uh, Austin High School had the Career Pathways Fair, where students could learn about local career opportunities and the training to get there. On March 26th, there's conferences where students could meet with teachers and confirm their schedules for next year. On March 27th was Riverman Prep Day at the Career Center. This was an event for seniors who would be enrolling at Riverman next fall, and about 65 students attended this event. Coming up this month is prom on Saturday, April 27th, and this year's theme is Glamour City. Also coming up this month is NCA testing this week for sophomores and juniors and ACT, te ACT testing on the 23rd. On April 17th is Austin Public Schools Poetry Contest Night, and next two FFA students, Abby and Jenna, were selected to be the 2024 Minnesota FFA Ambassadors during the convention this month. Lastly, seniors who earn a GPA of 3.9 or higher at the end of their first semester of senior year will be recognized as a student of high distinction for the class of 2024 at the excellent ceremony on May 1st. With the school year coming to a close, there are so many activities and events going on for the students of Eston High School, and we're excited for everything to come. Any questions? Yes. Superintendent Page, Chairperson Dubé, and members of the board. My name is Anita Rao, and I am your 11th grade representative for this year. I will be presenting to you the second half of the student report. Spring has started, and the end of the school year is slowly creeping up. With spring sports in full swing, we can't wait to see how it plays out. The first track week took place last Thursday at Faribault, as well as the first baseball game at St. Peter. Softball won their first home game against Byron on the 22nd, and boys tennis played a match in Owatonna last Saturday. One exciting thing happening in sports was Elena Kennedy is nominated for the Class A Swim and Dive Athlete of the Year, and cheer tryouts have also been announced to take place May 7th through 10th, so any students interested Make sure to mark your calendars. Next, the music department has been very busy for the last month with many concerts and performances taking place around town. On the 22nd of March, the high school jazz group performed at the Paramount Theater with the trombone quartet, the Paper Clips. This was made possible by a grant received from the SEMAC and Minnesota Public Radio. They gave the music department the opportunity to bring the group down from the cities to spend three days working with their jazz department and then performing a concert. Next, on March 27th, the elementary school had the music tour day. One group from each department, choir, band, and orchestra performed at each school. From the choir department, the Austinators performed three pieces and then representing the orchestra, Lothbard Vieira performed, and then lastly, Jazz One show the elementary students what band is all about. The annual music tour is such an amazing way to introduce Austin's music program to kids at such a young age and get them excited about their future years in the Austin district. Finally, the Austin Air show with the theme Millennium will be taking place this week on the 11th and through the 13th, and tickets will go for $10 on the main floor and $7 on the balcony in Crystal Hall. The annual show is something many people in the community look forward to, and we can't wait to see how it turns out. Looking over to the art department, the Ellis Middle School play took place last Friday and Saturday. The Ellis Drama Club has been preparing the last few months, and we're excited to showcase their version <coughs> of Judy B. Jones Jr. The local plays put on by the school district are such a good way to bring the community together and get fun new memories to all who attend. Finally, the new CO members have been announced with 20 new, new members, 22 new members joining and are excited to start their business journey. If you're interested in seeing the current CEO of businesses, the annual trade show will take place on May 15th. There are so many amazing things happening throughout the Austin School District and Norris and I just shared with you. Thank you so much for your time. This concludes the second half of the student report. If you guys have any questions,
Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? Second. Is that a motion by CC? Yes, it was. And a second by Kathy. Sorry. I couldn't tell. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Our next agenda item is our strategic plan update on science with our curriculum coordinators, Andrea Mayo and Sheila Berger. Chairperson today, Superintendent Payton, and members of the board, we are here to give you the update on our science curriculum review process. I'm going to update you on K through five, and Andrea will talk about six through twelve. Um, first of all, this year or last year before I came to the department, they had started work on um, aligning the new Minnesota standards, which are to be implemented next year, to our current curriculums and then determining what our needs were. This year, um, in, in, we kind of made a, a change of plan and programming, and we're moving to an elementary science specialist at grades K through 4. Um, we interviewed uh, applicants in December and hired four science specialists that will serve in the four elementary buildings. We have met monthly to determine our programming model. Um, they're very excited. It's a great group to work with. And we are now narrowing down curriculum for our curriculum selection, which will occur yet this spring. Um, fifth grade, which more aligns with the elementary, has also been a part of that curriculum review uh, process and will also make a selection this spring. And we will implement the new model, the new curriculum, and the new standards all next year in a specialist rotation model for all K through four students, and then they'll have data science in grade five. Questions about the K five? Is there a specialist in fifth grade then? No, no, that's just a part of their rotation of courses. So okay, they have so someone that yeah. just yes, 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 correct. For good yes. sake. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll turn it over to Andrea. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so as we look at science, a secondary science curriculum, fifth grade is kind of that anomaly. Uh, we've kind of done a phased adoption. So sixth grade adopted several years ago. Um, and, and some partnerships with some other districts as they were looking at curriculum. So sixth graders actually have their curriculum in place for about three or four years now. Last year, um, as we look at the 2022-23 school year, uh, we completed program reviews with our seven through 12 science team where they really looked at what their current practice was, they looked at their data, they looked at who their students were in their classrooms. They did some reflecting on what does a science look like in our classrooms right now with reading, writing, assessments, um, in collaboration. After we went through that program review process, um, we took some time to dissect the new standards where they really looked at the individual benchmarks and I challenged them to write the I can statements that will go along with it. Um, as we first look at the standards, it, it is a new model where they're going to be asked to be much more hands-on and do a lot more modeling in their science classrooms. And as I looked at some of the standards, it was really important for them to be able to dig in and really think about what does this mean. And they started to generate ideas about how can we do this differently? How can we engage our kids in the same spot? This year, um, in 23-24, because of our phase implementation, there are some changes in the curriculum that will occur. Um, our 7th and 8th grade implemented their new science standards. They'll still have life science at the 7th grade level, but now this year they have physical science at the 8th grade level, which is a change. It used to be that we had physical science at the 9th grade level. So to ensure that our students are getting the curriculum and getting the physical science standards, we needed to adopt curriculum earlier at the 7th and 8th grade level to make sure they had all that content piece. So they are in the... Uh, Right now, they are in the process of implementing their new curriculum, and I just got an email today that says, we've looking more questions about our curriculum, so we're going to dig into that and make sure they're supported with what they need. 
This year at our 9th through 12th grade level, uh, they reviewed research, they did some reading about science and instruction and what it could look like in the classroom, what it should look like in the classroom. And they also uh, looked at best practices in teaching science. They have been going through the process of investigating the science curriculum, taking a list of, I believe, about 12 of the different curriculums that might be possibilities. Uh, we did a dive and looked at what other districts around us were doing around the state. And we've done some reviews looking at um, different states even about what curriculums they are choosing and why they're choosing them. And so we're in the process right now of looking at curriculum selection. Um, we've narrowed it down to a few different options and we'll begin reviewing that and we're looking to include parents um, in on that process of selection as well so that they can have a voice and see what, what we're looking at. That voice is really, really important. <coughs> and then as we move into 24-25, we will implement our new curriculum and our new standards. Um, and as we look at implementing those new standards, ninth grade will now be earth science. Um, that's going to be a new content area for our staff, and so lots of learning to do around that. Ninth grade will be biology, and we'll still be testing in biology uh, for our students. Um, that's going to be NCA4, and so it will be a very different test. They're looking at um, using data a lot more rather than just memorization of what science content are. Um, so that will be different and more to come about that, um, but they'll be implementing new curriculum next year. Continue to chemistry in 11th grade and an option for physics in 12th grade. Any questions about secondary science? Can you remind me what they were having in 8th grade? Yeah, before it was a kind of an integrated science, so they did some uh, earth science, they did some physical science, and so it was, a, it was a shift. It was really moving that physical science piece to the eighth grade. Um, very different than what our teachers were doing previously. All right, thanks. Thank you. Our next agenda item is our Packer Profile update um, with speakers AHS Principal Matt Schmidt, Packer Profile Coordinator Emily Hubbard, and Career Pathway Coordinator Jane Carlson. How is this celebrity? Jane and Emily coordinated their outfits today, actually. <laughs> 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 we didn't plan it. I am not a bright colored dresser at all. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was so funny we were matching. Yeah. I also sent you the PowerPoint. Oh, it's right. happening. Oh, there you go. There we go. That's not how we don't write it for you. Chair today is Superintendent Page, uh, members of the board. We are here to talk about strategic priority number two, packer profile for all learners. And more specifically, thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, I just threw it up since I thought you were having trouble. Did you? Oh, I don't have the PowerPoint. I just have what you have in the board docs. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, is yours working now? No, it's not. I have a napkin. Anticipation is growing. So I don't think they're ready. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm going to drop this. Is something. Okay. 
There you go. So throughout the presentation, you're going to hear themes about our mission to inspire, empower, and accelerate. And you're also going to hear themes about our core values and how this new class incorporates our core values along. Years now, and the Pecker profile course that is going to be implemented next year, I am extremely excited about as an educator, but also as a parent of four kids um, who go through the Austin Public School System because they know they're. Are lots of things happening with the Packer Profile throughout all of our um, schools and our buildings, but we're really excited about what is to come. So as you see here on the screen, this course is really designed to help students be successful in their not only high school career, but also moving forward into what they're going to do in the future. It will focus on the academic skills, social skills, and soft skills needed to succeed beyond high school whether that be in a um, four-year college, two-year program, or straight into the workforce. So it's going to allow students some time to explore a lot of different options and really to see um, what's possible for them. And um, the work that we've been doing with our ninth graders this year, the one thing that we're finding is, is we just don't have enough time. I meet with them once a month, and they are coming in and they're asking great questions. They are seeking out opportunities through the Career Center and Ms. Carlson. But there's just not enough time to do the things that we need. So we're excited about the opportunities that this, um, that this course will bring. So how did we get here? Um, we work with students and teachers. We saw from our students and teachers that um, students were saying we need more support, we need more time, and we need to be prepared for what happens after we leave here. Um, a couple really great examples that stood out to me, we had a student who shared about their sibling recently in a uh, grading group that we were working with. And they talked about how they were a 4.0 student in high school, graduated with high distinction, it was amazing. They went to college and first semester was a huge struggle because they didn't um, necessarily have to work hard to get their 4.0. They were, it came naturally to them and they um, didn't know how to study, they didn't have some of those time management skills. And when we look at some components that we can help students with, I think it's critical for us to remember um, that all of our students need different supports in those areas. Um, so this will serve our entire uh, population. We're also um, seeing that the, through, our, through our school itself, teaching career readiness and connect is no longer an option. Um, through discussions with teachers and our teachers union, we were not able to implement this through connect moving forward. So we had to find a way to be able to implement this and get it to every student. Um, and that is where this course came from. There will still be opportunities and things happening for our sophomores, juniors, and seniors in a um, more of a kind of push-in model like I've been doing this year with our uh, ninth graders. We also work with our site leadership team and then have had visits and collaboration with many other school districts. Um, in the state of Minnesota, we were able to collaborate with Detroit Lakes, Stillwater, and Byron and have learned um, some amazing things from them, but also are developing it into what works for Austin Public Schools. So it's been exciting to be able to kind of see that process. Um, just today I had a student who's a senior who was in my office and they said, what is this better profile thing? One of my hockey teammates was talking to me about it. She's going to be a high schooler next year. And I explained it to her and she was like, oh, huh, that would have been really nice to have. That would have been an awesome opportunity. And I was like, yeah, no, sorry for you, but hey, we're still here to help you right now if you can. So they're, um, we're hearing that from our students, which is encouraging and exciting. This also helps to fulfill the state statutes that are required in college and career readiness. Um, so that component has, is being covered through this course and will fulfill that for all of the students who go to Austin High School. I'm sure you can all read this. Um, so in front of you, on your, this was sent to you out in, in your board uh, report, but this was just through our survey that we did with students, staff, and families. And our students are saying that they want voice and choice in what they learn. They want um, people to work with them in a way that benefits all students and they want hands-on, meaningful, challenging learning that prepares them for the future. 
So we're hearing that from our students. They're asking directly for, like, I want things that I'm going to use. What am I going to do with this? Um, from, our, from our families, we're hearing we want the skills that are necessary for our students to succeed in life and to succeed beyond their time um, you know, at home with their families. And then finally, um, in our teachers, looking at that collaborative working environment where they can get the supports that they need for the classroom to help uh, prepare students for the future. So through all of those pieces, um, I think we have some really exciting things coming our way. Right. So the why. Nation data shows a six-year graduation rate for students is 62%. More than 50% of people who complete their degree are underemployed. Now what underemployed means is that they're looking for full-time employment or they're not using their degree. And so the issue that we've had is we tell kids, graduate high school and prepare yourself for college. And that's where you should go. Now, the issue with that is not every job requires a four-year education. For every 10 jobs that are out there, one job requires a master's, two a bachelor's, and seven an associate's degree or apprenticeship. So what is happening is, is we have a group of students going to college that aren't using their degree. And the problem with that is they're going to college and it's a very, very expensive exploration class and I'm all for the college experience but we should be going in eyes wide open and there's a lot of statistics on this page but I'll point out just a couple there's 48 million people in the United States today that are in debt for college another statistic ages between 35 and 44 in 2001 13 percent we're in debt now it's up to 34 percent that debt has risen from 10,000 to 120,000 what we're looking to do is start in the ninth grade, start to look at what careers are out there, what is possible for our students, and then what is it gonna to take to get that certification or degree to get that job. So when we talk about career ready, we're literally talking about career, and that might be walking out of high school and getting a career, that might be a one-year certification, a two-year, a four-year, or a doctorate. There's another reason for this course. We talked a lot about career exploration. We talked about our core values, people skills. There's a small component of this where study skills are taught. And this is our data from the last two years after just the first quarter. And so when you look, for example, in 2023-24, there were 50 kids that received one F. There are 27 unique students that received two Fs. So if you carry that all the way to the right, there are 132 students that received an F after first quarter. The transition between eighth and ninth grade is incredibly hard, and I would argue maybe one of the most challenging transitions that our students face. And it's hard. And when we went back to them and asked what they need, they needed time. And so when we talk about academic support, we think about these kids that are struggling, and there are, and we're gonna help support them. But I've taught AP classes for many years, and I can tell you that those students need help and time, because they're gonna be stretched in ways that they never have, and it's a big transition going from eighth and ninth grade, and they need, they're asking for, I need time to meet with my teachers, I need time to make up work. I need time for acceleration, and this will help that out. Now, the other part of this is, is once we get them into a, hey, here's what's possible, we can start to look at what pathways we have here at our school and what's available to them there. And so Jane Carlson is going to take it. Okay, so we're going to be so in working with the career pathways, really we start out the year in this class helping students understand, you know, what are your interests, what are you good at? Because sometimes we spend a lot of time, if you reflect on yourself, I think a lot of us tend to think about things we're not so good at. This will give us an opportunity to say, you know what, you are strong in this. Here are some things you should really think about. And through those interest surveys, 
Sometimes kids that I have done this with have seen it, say on the pre pre-ACT is a good example. Um, it will plot them out on a chart and say, you know, you should think about this career pathway. And so many students will say, really? Me? Like, I don't think so. And it, yes. And helping them understand, like, yes, you can do this. And this is something you should think about. So starting with their interests, also helping them think about lifestyle. Because as you're thinking about a career path, Every career has a little different lifestyle to it. Do you want an eight to four job? Do you want to travel? Do you want to be in business for yourself? And there are a lot of things to consider. Do you want to work shifts? Um, so thinking about that lifestyle and just not just the money. And then we were very purposeful about laying out entry level jobs, two year degree jobs or certificate jobs and four year degree jobs and making some visuals that really showed that those are equally important. Um, for years, we kind of really pushed kids into four-year college. And now we know that the job market right now, there are jobs everywhere and high demand, high paying jobs without a four-year degree. So at the high school, we've identified five basic career paths. Um, we have our ag food, natural resources, business, Education, health, science, human services, that's a really big one. Um, engineering, manufacturing, and technology, and that one also includes computer science. And then arts and communication. So when we work with the freshmen in this course, one of the things we'll be doing with them is helping them think big picture. Um, developing that four-year plan of high school. As a teacher who has taught electives, so often kids are kind of like, oh, I don't know what I'll take. I think I'll take this course because my friend is. Um, but really making it more about them. And okay, if I want to be in a business pathway, here are some courses that I should really think about taking. And they're all listed in there based on whether they're introductory, intermediate, or advanced. And it gives them the opportunity to lay out their whole four years of high school and it provides relevance to what they're doing. If they know they want to be in the health science pathway, then they'll be looking at this and saying, okay, if I want to be here senior year, I need to make sure that I get these experiences between now and then. And it's not always just coursework. Maybe it's a club, maybe it's athletics. We talked about athletics earlier, but there is so much learning that goes on in all of those activities. So really helping our freshmen be aware of like, Here's what's available in the school for you um, and getting them involved. Here's an example of one of our pathway diagrams that I was talking about earlier. So we, with input from students, decided a roundabout would be a nice way to represent that because they are jumping on and jumping off points. And you might exit at the first exit in the roundabout and be there forever. Or you might hop back in the roundabout and keep going around. Um, that's your choice, but we chose careers from DEED with regional salaries and high need, high need jobs. So as the students are looking at these posters, they can kind of get an idea of, okay, um, what is out there locally and what might I be interested in doing after high school? The other thing these posters will show at the bottom is courses at the high school that relate well into that pathway. So like as we look at the business one, it's not all business courses. Some of them are, but world language might be important. Modern world events, you know, digital content creation. If you're going to business for yourself, you might want to know some things about graphic design. So helping them choose all those courses throughout high school that are going to help them along their pathway. And we have one of these for each of our five pathways. And we also recently, thank you, Ryan Mayers, um, are starting to develop one about the military careers. And this is a little bit of a tough one because virtually any career in the world, you could have a pathway into that from the military. So it was a little tricky getting, you know, deciding what to put on the poster and what to give priority. But again, we kind of focused on high need, high wage jobs. So that's our military one. Um, and Emily is going to talk a little bit about our school in sequence. So with um, everything that Jane just shared with you too, our current ninth graders were able to sit down and interact a lot with those different pathways as they were going through their four-year plan and as they've been building and working with their portfolio this year. 
and the conversations that they were having around registration were different than conversations I'd ever heard. Instead of being like, what class are you going to take? Um, and try to remind them that they might not be friends with the same people in a year, maybe even a month. Um, they were having conversations more about what they actually wanted to do and what that could lead to and what opportunities it would bring later on <coughs> down, down the road. And it's really exciting to see our students because they're able to consider that and think about what they want to explore more. And then when they're in school, they're enjoying the courses that they're taking because it's in their interest area. So um, with our scope and sequence, we're also working to continue to build our curriculum and, and what this is going to look like for next year. Um, you can see here, we, we had mentioned before, but developing the academic, social, and soft skills that are needed after um, they graduate from high school. Uh, all of those pulling in our Austin and Public Schools core values. Students are also going to spend time learning about organization, self-regulation, time management, self-advocacy, so skills that we sometimes think our students should have or they should just pick up on, and they, they tell us, we're not taught this, like you didn't teach us how to do this. Um, digital literacy will come into play, a creation of a four-year plan will be in place for all of our students. They will work with different learning and study strategies that can help them to be successful and start that ninth grade year off strong, but also then grow into their next three years and beyond. Um, they will also be able to explore and develop their personal aptitudes and learn about their personal strengths. Students will engage in career exploration and they will also be developing their professional portfolio. So there's a lot of work that is going on will be continuing to go on, but um, there's a lot, like we've said, a lot of exciting things coming for students at Austin, Austin High School. So there have been a few frequent questions that we've been asked, and I thought I would, before I ask you questions, we just go into a few that we've heard most often. How many credits can a freshman earn? A freshman can earn seven credits per year. Um, what classes are freshmen required to take? That's math, science, social studies, language arts. Those are the four that they have to take freshman year, along with the new Packer Profile Seminar class, so five classes. Um, the class is a four-year class. And do freshmen need to take health and physical education? That's a common question. They do need to take it as a graduation standard. However, they do not need to take health and PE either freshman year. And so that was a common question. Can freshmen still take music before a language? The answer is yes, they can. They have the five required courses. They take world language and music. And then off of that, another question was, is what if a student wanted to take a double music and a world language, this might prevent them from doing so. There was one student that we ran into with this conflict and we'll be able to help them out whether they would take both music and world language. So that was not an issue for us. So what's next? Hiring really good staff, and we hired our first staff member. Robin Garcia was a success coach for us, and wonderful connections with our students and our community members. She's got an EO background, and when we talk about preparing all students for the real world, it's really important that we concentrate on the word all. And students in the EO world are going to be supported with the addition of this hire. But every student in our building is going to get this class because it's important for everyone. And we already talked about scope and sequence and finishing the new curriculum. We'll finish that shortly. Um, we're getting feedback from our SLT members, um, from our Abbott group, um, and from others. So that's where we're at. Questions? I applaud you for the work that's been done. This looks marvelous. Thank you. Um, my concern oftentimes is for the employer, the person that has needs that are the ones with the world language, with the music, maybe taking different electives. Mm -hmm. Is there still supports in place for that student, for that parent that comes in and says, this isn't going to work for you? Um, do you know what? Sure. Yeah. I believe so. So a couple of answers to the parent as far as can I get every course that I that I want to take? And so we require 24 credits to graduate, but we offer 28 credits. Uh, 
We also offer some programming after school hours. Our healthcare credit can be done after school. We have OJT and seminar that can be picked up after school. Uh, we have a health and PE credit that you can do uh, credit for learning outside of the school day. Once we get to our junior and senior level, we have PSEO online and in-person courses, and then we also have our um, online school. So although we're requiring students to take this course, I'm gonna argue every one of them needs it. There's opportunity to, to get all the courses that they want. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? I just had a comment. Thank you very much for putting these posters together. I think they're phenomenal. And thank you for taking a stab at the military. I think that's really important. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to just commend you all for presenting through noise. <laughs> Those are background music. <laughs> you you stay focused, and I, that requires kudos as well. So thank you. Our next agenda item is our request for the approval of donations. This is going to be an action item. Our speaker is our executive director of finance and operations, Todd Mecklenburg. Good evening. So again, I have the honor tonight standing in front of you to go through um, the donations that we receive. These are all in compliance with our school board policy 706, acceptance of gifts. So tonight's recommendation is to approve and accept all of these. So I will go through them. Paternal order of Eagles, $500 Sumner Elementary. Paternal order of Eagles, $2,500 IJ Holton. Paternal orders of Eagles, $500 Ellis Orchestra Program. Music Boosters of Austin, $82 Ellis, Ellis, Orchestra program. Family of Sue Ruzik? Ruzik? Did I say that? Somebody can. Ruzik. Ruzik. Sue just told me that and I uh, <laughs> forgot and I got a uh, few steps here. <clears throat> Books valued at about $2,000 for Woodson Kindergarten. American Legion, $5,000. Nephilim Playground. On Time Sports, $536. Athletic and Activities Department. Banfield PTC, $10,000 for Banfield Elementary. Westminster Church, $200 English language program. St. Olaf Lutheran Church, classroom supplies valued at about $400, Sumner Elementary. National World War I Museum and Memorial, $250, Austin High School Choir. Music Boosters of Austin, $846.65, Austin High School Jazz Band. Is there a motion to approve the donations? Yeah. Motion from Peggy. Second. Second from Carol. Any discussion? Right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Our next item is a request for the approval of the Nevlin Elementary Program bids. Also an action item with Director of Finance and Operations, Thank you. Again, this is a great honor to be up here. Um, what we've continually done is with our buildings and grounds department has reviewed all of our playground structures that we have at all of our elementary schools. With us moving to the neighborhood schools and moving kindergarten through fourth grade, we took a look at um, Nevlin and the ADA um, accessibility, and that is not in, with the pods moving over and everything, we knew we had to look at something there. Um, we asked um, Joe to continually look at that, and we realized we need to spend about fifty dollars to $80,000 just to repair what is there and have an ongoing expenditure. So what we're able to do is we work with two different, um, and even with those repairs, we still would not have the ADA compliance and um, accessibility that we need. So we reached out to two companies to provide estimates for us, just looking at replacing that and starting over. So Little Tykes gave us a quote of $198,000. Finnegan Playground Adventures gave us a quote of $147,683. So 
So that would be replace everything that is out there, give us ADA compliance. Uh, we would also need to spend about $10,000 of our um, funding also to redo the concrete work out there. So this would be a poured in, this would be like some of the other ones we have done in the past. Um, in the attachment is uh, a quick view of our proposal, of what we're looking at. So I will open up to any questions, comments, but we're looking for your approval tonight for us to move forward with replacing the Nephilim player. Is there a motion to approve the Nephilim Elementary Playground bid? Motion by Evan. Is there a second? Second by CC. All right. Conversation, discussion? My only question is, I think it's great. Um, is there a continued plan to continue to make sure we're um, checking all of the alleyway entries? Um, you know, South Gate. South Gates is getting a little bit older, right? Um, Sumner, Sumner and Devon will both be new as of this year, and then I know that. Southgate's been around for a while. Um, how old is Woodson's? I don't know. I assume that there's a plan. That, that's my question. Yeah, yes, I can speak to that. So our buildings are ground team does all of our checks um, on our playground equipment. Great. Right. So. Right. Any other, anybody else have anything to say? All those in favor? Aye. Yeah. Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Our next agenda item is the request for the approval of non-renewal of probationary teachers. This is an action item with our human resources directors who start presenting. Chairperson DeBay, Superintendent Page, members of the board. And today I will present to you the resolution for non renewed probationary teacher contracts. Um, whereas Jessica Fedna, Julia Gray, Janelle Keenan, Dana Larson, and John Sand are probationary teachers. Now, therefore, be resolved by the school board of Independent School District Number 492 as follows. Pursuant to the Minnesota Statute, Section 122A.40, Subdivision 5, the probationary teacher contracts of Jessica Fedna. Grade 4 teacher at Manville, Julia Gray, Family and Consumer Science teacher at Austin High School, Janelle Keenan, Grade 4 teacher at Southgate Elementary, Dale Larson, Social Study teacher at Austin High School, and John Sand, Physical Education teacher at Ellis Middle School, are hereby non renewed and <coughs> intended school district 492 is hereby terminated effective at the end of the 23 school year. The school board has reviewed and hereby approves the written notices informing the teachers of the non renewal of their probationary contract. The superintendent is directed to sign the written notices of non renewal on behalf of the board. The superintendent or his designee is directed to serve the affected probationary teacher with a copy of this resolution and the written notices informing the teachers of the non renewal of his or her probationary contract. Service shall be accomplished by hand delivery. To the non renewed teachers and shall take place before July 1st, 2024. The school board would like to take this opportunity to thank the teachers identified above for their service to the district. Right, this requires a roll call vote for each um, staff member. I will read each name and then we'll have Sharon do a roll call vote. Um, Jessica Bednar, is there a motion to join to read the whole thing? Second. Oh, CC made the motion. Kathy made a second. Bo Cobble? Dubay? Yes. Green? Aye. Crock? Yes. Callister? Yes. Sorensen? No. Young? No. All right. Motion passes. Julia Gray? Is there a motion? So moved. Motion from Kathy. Is that CC? Second. Second. 
Um, or couples. Today? Yes. Me? Aye. Crock? Aye. McAllister? Yes. Sorensen? No. Alright, motion passes. General Keating, is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Kathy. Is there a second from Carol? Um, one couple. Dewey? Yes. Green? Crock? McAllister? Yes. Sorensen? Yes. No. Okay. Motion passes. Dale Larson? Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Kathy? Second. Second from TC? Oh. Uh, roll call vote. Dewey? Yes. Green? Aye. Crock? Aye. McAllister? Yes. Sorensen? Yes. Young? Yes. All right, motion passes. John Sand? Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Cece? Second. Second by Kathy? Roll call vote. Today? Yes. Green? Aye. Crock? Aye. McAllister? Yes. Sorensen? Yes. Young? Yes. All right, motion passes. Thank you so much. Next, we have the request for the approval of revised policy 410 Family Medical Leave Act. An action item is uh, Human Resources Director Sue Stark. Thank you. Chairperson DeVay, Superintendent Page, members of the board. Um, tonight, I am asking for your approval of policy 410 Family and Medical Leave. Um, policy as presented in your packet. Is there a motion to approve the Family Medical Leave Act Policy 410? So moved. Second. Motion by Kathy, second by Evan. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, Sue. All right, this is a reminder that we have our school board study session um, on Monday, April 22nd at 4 p.m. in the district office conference room. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Moved by Peggy. Second. Second by Evan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you so much. Have a good evening.